it's time to rank all the AFC North draft picks. We have the S tier, the A tier, the B tier, the C tier, and the good old Cleveland Clownies tier. So it's going to get a little crazy, guys. Let's start off right away. Let's start off with the Cincinnati Bengals. And the first pick by the Cincinnati Bengals was Miles Murphy. And I'm going to try to see if I can find him real fast here. Uh, he is right here. I'm going to give that an S tier pick. The reason why, because first off, when I first heard the pick, right, you guys saw my reaction. I walked out of the room because I was really about the whole idea of, you know, we should go with a tight end. A tight end, a corner, maybe one of those two positions. And at the end of the day, as I learned more about it, I learned one thing that Duke Tobin really is trying to preach to all of us fans. I think this is Duke Tobin's message to us. <laughs> no, on a real note though, after I thought more about it, it's a really amazing pick. He's First off, he could have been a top 20 pick easily. Easily a top 20 pick if not for injuries. He's a great, versatile, rotational guy. You can pretty much line him up anywhere you want on the defensive line. He can do a pretty much anything you want him to do. He's st his style is Miles Garrett. So eventually, he's going to become the starter on this team. Not right away, but eventually his goal, and obviously the Bengals' goal, is to have him as a starting player on this team. So instead of going out there and getting Yannick Aguakwe, we're going to have to pay an arm and a leg for. Then you're going to have to give him the start because he's not going to play as a backup. Instead, you get this guy who's going to develop very nicely, become a nice asset for loose defense, and eventually become a starter. So he really, in all honesty, is going to be a pick where you might have for the next 10 years. Where he's a nice rotational guy, he's a starter, he, he just fills in, and the best thing possible. Two things here. One, keeping players, you know, uh, letting them get refreshers. So one player goes to the sideline, one player comes in. Keeping players just, you know, not overwhelmed, not overworked. Bam, right? That's number one. Um, keeping them not tired. I'm trying to think of the, the correct terminology, guys. I apologize. It was a long, it's been a long weekend. You guys not know, I streamed all three days. Uh, four hour stream, four hour stream, and then a three hour stream. But... Amazing pick. S plus tier uh, pick. And then the second thing about it is, of course, again, he does not going to cost that much. And if he develops into Miles Garrett one day, it's going to be nasty. All right. The second pick for the Bengals here. That was, of course, um, where is he? DJ Turner, which is going to be right here. This is another player I'm going to put an S tier. And it's not just because it's the Bengals video, guys. The reason why I really do like DJ Turner is because DJ Turner is so, so, so balanced. And you don't usually find that in a cornerback. It's very difficult to find a cornerback who is good in coverage and also good in run support. He's also really fast. So he can return kicks, he can return punts, and he can do a mix of everything. You need to line him up in the box. Let's say, for example, you're going against Derrick Henry. He keeps running the ball against you. You need to line up more players in the box. A lot of times in that situation, you might take a cornerback off the field. You might put in a linebacker or a safety or something like that to stack the box to stop running backs. Well, guess what? DJ Turner, he's that guy you can fill in in the box, and he's not a liability. He can get the job done, get after the running back, and make the tackle. I love this pick for that reason. He's one of the most versatile players in this whole entire draft, and that is something that I'm going to give him an S tier for. Um, third round pick was Jordan Battle. I love this pick a lot. Um, where is Jordan Battle here? I'm going to give it a A tier grade. Because I love this pick a lot. He just needs to develop a little bit more. And slowly over time, we'll work on his skills to get even better and better. Um, I think this is a great pick, not only because now you have a rotational guy with Nick Scott. But if Dax Hill can really, you know, do amazing... I think Nick Scott plus, you know, Jordan Battle. On the other side, Dax Hill. That's a scary secondary to look at. I was going to put him at S tier, but I'm going to put him A tier because he has a tad bit more developing to do. Um, but nonetheless, though, he could even be S tier. I'm going to just put him at A tier for this reason. The fourth round pick for the Bengals. That was the first receiver off the board. 
and that was wide receiver Charlie Jones. I'm going to give him an A tier. Um, this pick made a lot of sense. He was best player available for Cincinnati. They're looking to eventually move on from um, Tyler Boyd, and this is Tyler Boyd's hair replacement, you know, his air replacement in the future. So eventually we'll see maybe Tyler Boyd, especially if he doesn't come if he doesn't get a contract this season and last year, he's gonna be gone. You need to replace him in some way, in some fashion. Now you have Charlie Jones. The only knock on him, he's 24 years old. So he's a little bit tad bit older than other receivers coming in. Um other than that though, he's he's kick returner, punt returner, he can do a little bit of everything. And you're gonna see a lot of these guys that, you know, might not make the starting roster or might not, you know, be in the first of the top eleven every single play. A lot of these guys are gonna be special teamers, so a lot of the potential there. Fifth round pick, Chase Brown. Let me just make sure. Yeah, it could be a fifth. Yeah, fifth round pick with Chase Brown. I'm gonna give it a uh, B. I really like this pick, Chase Brown. The biggest problem with him is his fumbling issues. Uh, he actually set a nationwide fumbling record in his time in college. He had eight fumbles and 600 snaps. That's something that Cincinnati's not going to put up with and no team would put up with in the NFL level. That's why he was a fifth round pick. He can work on his fumbling issues and he can you know, perfect those. He could easily be an S tier guy. This player right here might be one of the fastest running backs Cincinnati ever had in the backfield. He is a speed demon. He is a wide receiver running back combo and he can outrun you in every way possible. That's where he really excels. Now, of course, you know, usually speed demons in the NFL, unless they have good hands, they have a lot of other qualities, usually they fail. I mean, we saw John Ross fail. We saw Pashard Pierman fail. We saw a lot of different, you know, players just simply not hit the mark just because they're really fast, but they don't have anything else to offer. That's where we're going to see some, some development and work on Chase Brown. But I'm going to give him a B tier grade because, again, you got to work on the fumbling. You can't have that be an issue. Um, at this pick, they could have had uh, McBride. But again, you got to think they're going to go best player on the board. And Chase Brown was the best player on the board, according to them. So, with that being said, let's talk about the sixth round pick. The sixth round pick, the first sixth round pick, was another receiver. And that was actually my man right here, uh, Andre. I'm not gonna be able to say his last name. I think he's a pretty solid receiver overall wise. At this point, you're just adding depth to the receiver position. This isn't really a Tyler Boy replacement. This is just kind of a rotational guy. Uh, he might make the team. He might not make the team. He's kind of one of those guys where he's just there, right? So that's nothing wrong with him. That's actually a pretty good uh, pick right there. All right, the next guy's sixth round pick was actually going to be a punter. And I'm going to give him an A tier. I think the biggest problem last year, one of the biggest problems last year, was definitely punting for the Cincinnati Bengals. And that's where you could see, you know, they bring in a sixth round guy here. He's going to compete in training camp, compete in preseason, and he might win his starting job. And you might have an Evan McPherson part two. But at the punter position, you got this pick for free by trading back with the Chiefs. So this is a free pick. This is a free player, and you get a really decent punter. I really do like this pick. I'm giving an A tier for that reason. Their last pick they have in the seventh round here for the Cincinnati Bengals before we move on to the other teams has to be this guy right here, which is a safety DJ um, Ivy. Where is he at? Right here. I'm going to give it a B tier. I don't think there's anything wrong with this pick. I think this pick is really good. Ro rotation purposes, special teams, and just depth purposes. I really like this pick. So, overall, this is what I'm ranking them. S tier was Miles Murphy and DJ Turner. A tier was uh, Jordan Battle, Charlie Jones, and Chase Brown. Oh, sorry, not Chase Brown. Um, and the punter. Uh, Chase B tier was Chase Brown, um, Andre... And finally, the safety, uh, DJ Ivy. And you can even say, again, like I said, if Chase Brown does fu fix his fumbling issues, you could even put him at A tier. I think it's still a really good pick. All right. Who do we go with next? Guess we go with the Ravens. Um, Ravens' first round pick. I'm going to see which, which one is their first round pick they have on here. Um, let me see. 
Zay Flowers. Okay, so their first round pick was right here. They got Zay Flowers. I'm gonna give it a A tier grade. He is five foot eight, and that's five foot nine. That's really the biggest mark on him. But the Ravens have had Steve Smith Sinor. They have had um, Steve Smith and Marquise Brown. Them about others. They've they've had Derek Mason. They've had some smaller receivers in the past, and they have worked out pretty well for Baltimore. Now Zay Flowers, where he works is he is an explosive player. He is a one play tidy type of player. They're very they're comparing him right now to Tyreek Hill. I think it's a really early comparison, but that's where he excels. He's a take it over the top type of guy. End around trick plays. He's a guy that just opens up this offense in a lot of ways with the running back position. And I think, honestly, it's not a bad pick at all. Uh, there are some players I'd rather them go with in that pick 20, uh, 22. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. I think it was a pretty solid pick across the board. Um, Second round, the Ravens went with, and I believe it's... Yes, they went with linebacker here. They went with Trenton Simpson. I'm going to give this an A tier or S tier pick. I think this was a really good pick. I know my chat when the, on the draft was going on was really upset about this pick. And looking more into him, I really like him. Listen, Patrick Queen is probably eventually going to leave. And that's just the facts are the facts, right? You want to get his replacement eventually. You got Roquan Smith. Now you get another really solid linebacker in Trenton Simpson. Uh, there are some issues with him but I think he can develop very well in this defense and become an absolute stud moving forward third round pick for the Ravens I think they again it, it does they don't have like the the Bengals have it very specific like this was our pick this was our round the Ravens are very confusing with how they do, did their picks um okay so I believe the next pick on the board was yeah I think it's gonna be this guy and this is a pass rusher. So I'm going to give Travis Robinson, pass rusher here, I'm going to give him a B tier grade. I don't think he's that, uh, I don't think he's that insanely crazy. But at the same time, if you're the Ravens here, you lost Justin Houston, you lost uh, Clayus Campbell, you know, you lost, um, I don't know, Justin Houston, Clayus Campbell. Yeah, you lost some pass rushers. You want to replace those pass rushers. Third round of actually this is the uh, fourth round. They didn't have a second round pick. The third round pick was Trenton Simpson. This is a fourth round pick. I forgot they lost a second round pick, but this is a fourth round pick. You get an edge rusher in the fourth round, just you know boost up that defense a little bit. You lost some pass rushers. Time to replace them. I love that pick. That is going to get a B tier grade. Their next pick, the fifth round pick they got was uh, Blue uh, Kelly. This is an S tier pick for me. I love, love, love this guy to the Baltimore Ravens here, especially with them possibly losing Marcus Peters. Possibly he's coming back. Uh, currently, Marcus Peters is a free agent. Nobody wants him, so he could come back to the Baltimore Ravens. This is an S-tier pick, especially in the fifth round. When I saw this pick, I was like, that is a really dang good pick. So that is definitely an S-tier pick for me. I think they did a really good job at that pick right there. Um, next guy, offensive tackle in the sixth round. They went with my man right here. I'm not going to say his name. B tier grade. Um, he's either going to be a backup to Stanley or a backup to Morgan Moses. Uh, one of the two. And finally, they went with and, uh, Andrew Voorhees in the seventh round. Offense alignment. This one gets an A tier grade for me. Listen, Andrew Voorhees could easily have been a top uh, first, second, third, fourth round pick. If wasn't he uh, wasn't for the fact he tore his ACL at the combine, he tore his ACL, he drops in the draft. He's now a seventh round pick to the Baltimore Ravens. He could have easily been a first, second, third round pick. I love this pick for the Ravens. Absolutely amazing pick for the Ravens here. If you are, um, I mean, you're literally getting a guy who in a couple years could become the biggest stud guard in the league. All right, let's go with. I think we go with Pittsburgh Steelers next, right? Yeah. So, Pittsburgh still is their first round pick after they traded was Brodick Jones. That's an S tier pick. You need to work on your offensive line. You need to improve your offensive line. I really, really love that pick. I think that pick is going to become a stud in the future. You got to protect your rookie quarterback. That's just how it is. You got to protect Kenny Pickett. 
Keep him upright, keep him clean, get this run game going, and it should help out a crap ton. Their second round pick, Joey Porter, S tier pick. Another really solid pick here. You need to focus on your secondary. You need to focus on your offensive line. They did it. Back-to-back -back picks. I really like their picks. Um, what is this? Did they pick him before? They did, okay. Their third round pick. Oh, sorry. Second round pick. Second second round pick here. They win a defensive lineman. Um, I'm going to give a B tier grade. I think it was a really good... Uh, Oh, wait, yeah, this is what COs, yeah. They went with defense lineman, uh, Kian, Keanu Benton. Haven't heard too much about him, but looks like a solid player. I'm going to give it a B-tier grade. I don't think it's well, the greatest pick of all time, but it's definitely still a decent uh, pick. Then they went Darnell Washington. I'm giving this our first C-tier grade of the uh, of the video. Listen, I had Darnell Washington mocked to the Bengals in a lot of videos at the 28th overall pick, but... The reason why he dropped is because a lot of teams had issues with something about him, right? And usually when there's smoke, there's fire. That's just a fact of life, right? And if all these teams missed or did not go after him and said, we're not going after him, we're not going after him, we're not going after him. We don't want him, we don't want him, we don't want him, we don't want him. After all the publicity about how amazing he looked in the combine and how a lot of people are interested in him and just excited about him. When there's smoke, there's fire. And also, I do not like him going to Pittsburgh. It's not because he's a division rival here. The reason why I don't like it is because I don't think he fits Pittsburgh's culture. I don't think he, not culture, but I don't think he fits their system. They're going to be throwing the ball a lot next year. They will. They're not going to be running the ball as much, uh, in all honesty. He's a run blocker. He's a glorified right tackle slash run blocker. Najee Harris... I, I think, yes, they can run the ball with Najee Harris. Don't get me wrong. But I don't think he's going to be, you know, a 1,500, 2,000-yard rusher next year. He's not going to be. They're probably going to throw the ball more than they run the ball. Which, at, every time they throw the ball, Donald Washington becomes almost obsolete in their offense. Because they're not going to have the time. We're not going to develop him as well as they need to to become a receiving threat tight end. He's a great run blocker. Don't get me wrong, he's an amazing run blocker. But they, I feel like for Pittsburgh, they should have went more with a vertical threat tight end. Someone to open the field up more. Someone who's more reliable for you know check down passes from Kenny Pickett. Rather than going with someone like Donnell Washington, who again, all these teams missed on for a reason. There's a reason why they, they missed on him, or they didn't pick him. And he's not a vertical threat tight end. He's a blocker. So, again, I know they have Pat Fryermuth. I know this is more of a backup play. But I just really do not like this pick to Pittsburgh. I would have loved this pick to Tennessee, if not the Bengals. I would have loved it to Tennessee. I think Tennessee could have really worked out well with Derrick Henry and having Donnell Washington. Does this open up the red zone offense? Absolutely. But, again, it's just I really not a fan of that, him going to Pittsburgh for that set of reasons. I just don't think it worked out very well. But... Maybe on Mar, maybe he ends up becoming a uh, star for them. And then finally, their last pick was the fourth round, 132. And they picked linebacker from Wisconsin here. I'm um, going to give this a B tier grade. I think it was a pretty solid grade overall. Um, you know, you need linebacker. You just lost Devin Bush. Get somebody new. Good pick. All right. The Clownies. The Clownies did not pick, guys, until the third round where they took wide receiver here. Cedric Tillman. I'm going to give a B tier grade. I think he's a pretty solid receiver. And where they drafted, he was the best player available. So I have no issue with that. Um, get more weapons for a prison inmate number four. And I think that could always help out a lot. You know, you got Mari Cooper now. You got Peoples Jones. Obviously, now you have Cedric here. Keep on loading up the offense, making the offense better. Even though you know you're going to run the ball 6,000 times with Nick Chubb. But you're gonna, you can act like you, you know. That you um, don't need to do that. Next pick, they went D-tackle. Ika from Baylor. I'm going to give this a S-tier grade. I think this was a really good pick. Uh, he's a, I think, in my opinion, he's a very underrated D-tackle. So I think that they got themselves a steal, especially end of the third here. You get you guys probably, in all honesty, a couple years, a glorified starter. That was a pretty dang good pick. Dewan Jones. 
offensive tackle, Ohio State. The good old Cleveland Clownies. So, we've talked about many times on this channel. Damon Jones, right? 1,000%. And I've said many times on this channel that he could easily be a top 5 pick. I'm oh, sorry, top um, 20 pick, right? Top 20. First round. Early second. He's not lasting to the end of the second. They took him in the... What is this? The fourth round or the third round? They took him in the fourth round at 111 pick. The reason why he dropped so bad, right? And again, don't know Washington is the same concept here. Is that there was so many red flags again about him that no team wanted him for that reason. He was 20 pounds overweight after his pro day. He was almost 400 pounds. He's, he, according to reports, people are saying he's lazy. He, he lacks the work ethic. He has certain issues. Nobody wanted him. There's a reason why he dropped so much. And again, like I said, I said the good old Cleveland Clownies because maybe it works out. But maybe it's just, it's a roll of a dice. Him and Donnell Washington, after they dropped so far, had just became huge rolls of the dices. 1,000%. Alright, next guy. Defensive end, Isaiah Mercury. I'm going to give this pick an A tier. I think it was a really solid edge rusher here. You get yourself a nice little uh, piece to give rotation purposes to Miles Garrett. And I think that was actually a really good pick by the Cleveland Clownies here. Then they went quarterback. They went with Thompson, Rob, uh, Doyen, Doya, Thompson, Robson. Uh, quarterback. Um, yeah, good old Cleveland Clownies. You're paying your quarterback $1 million this year because you move the signing bonus in the future. And you're uh, paying him $75 million next year and $100 million a year after that. Good old Cleveland Clownies. Um, that's where I got to put him there. Then they went with a uh, cornerback, Cameron Mitchell. I think he was a pretty solid pick. I'm going to give him a B-tier grade. Actually, nah, I'm going to give him a C-tier grade. I think he was... Eh. I'll give him B-tier. He's a pretty solid corner. I almost gave them the um, Browns treatment here. Uh, Ohio State center. I think that was actually a pretty good pick. And there we go. Go with B-tier. So, uh, only to recap, our S-tier grades was Miles Murphy, DJ Turner by the Bengals. Then the Ravens went with Trenton Simpson and Blue Kelly. And then Pittsburgh Steelers went with Brodick Jones and Joey Porter. And finally, the Browns went with Ica. That's the only S-tiers I have here. A-tiers, Jordan Battle, Charlie Jones, and finally... Um, Brad Robbins, punter. For the Ravens, Zay Flowers, Andrew Voorhees. For the Steelers, I'm oh, sorry, as you, the Steelers or the Browns? That was the Steelers. Who did a, I should know, was it the Browns? That was the Browns. The edge rusher, uh, Mercury. For B tier, I have Chase Brown. I have, um, Chase Brown. I have, uh, Andre. Uh, for the Bengals picks. And also uh, DJ Ivy for the Bengals here. And then finally for the Ravens. I have uh, Tavis Robinson um, for B tier. We also have the tackle guy. However you say his name. Or the guard guy. So bad. And then finally for the Steelers here. We have for B tier. Can't, I do not. Benton. I don't know how to say these guys' names. These guys have weird, weird names. That's why I love the draft. I was Nick Herbig for the Steelers. And then finally, the Browns picks, which was Cedric Tillman. Um, we have the Cameron Mitchell. And finally, their center. For the C tier, Donnell Washington go to Pittsburgh. And a good old Cleveland Clownies, Dewan Jones. And finally, the quarterback. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.